five benefits of fasting. If you currently feel stuck or if you feel like you need a breakthrough in your life, this video may be the very thing to help you do that. The different kind of fast in the Bible, whether it's abstaining from fruit and just drinking water, there's a Daniel fast, eating things that are not pleasant to the body, and there's also a fast without food and water for three days like we see in the book of Esther. No matter what fast you choose to do before God, I want to tell you of these five benefits that you can see in your life today when you do that. The first benefit of fasting is that you're obeying God. And Jesus says, if you love me, you'll keep my commandments. Now, in the Sermon on the Mount, Jesus talked about how we should pray and how we should give. At the same time, he also talked about how we should fast. Now, you have to realize Jesus didn't say, if you fast. He says, when you fast. He expects each one of us as followers of him actually do that. And so just by the fact that we want to seek God and fast and pursue his face, we know that we are his true children. The second benefit of fasting is that it brings healing to your physical body. In Isaiah chapter 58, verse 6 to 8, God lists out the type of fast that he's looking for and at the end, how you can have your body renewed and revived and healed if you follow that fast. And here's how it reads, Is this not the fast that I have chosen, says the Lord, to lose the bonds of wickedness, to undo heavy burns, and to let the oppressed go free, and that you break every yoke? Is it not to share your bread with the hungry, and that you bring to your house the poor who are cast out? And when you see the naked, that you cover him, and not hide yourself from your own flesh? And if you do all of this, says God, then your light shall break forth like the morning, and your healing shall spring forth speedily, and your righteousness shall go before you, and the glory of the Lord shall be your rear guard. Did you know that scientists and doctors in the past couple decades have really endorsed fasting? And this is after a thousand years ago when Jesus says we should fast. God God knows what he's doing. When you actually fast physically, your body is actually breaking down certain toxins, certain things that are stored in your body for a long time, and you get rid of it. And that's how you get healed for a lot of diseases that are in our society today. You can easily go on Google or Amazon and find books of how doctors today, a lot of the treatments has to do with just administering fasting to their patients. Whether it's diabetes, cancer, high blood pressure, many other different diseases today that seems to be incurable, some doctors are using the fasting treatment to help their patients. And it works because God has put into our bodies healing mechanisms on a physical level. How much more will it be if we combine the physical level of fasting with spiritual level that we can seek God while we fast? How much more will we receive the divine healing touch of God? But as Christians, of course, we're fasting more than just a physical benefit. We're fasting for a spiritual reason. But the second benefit not to forget also is that God says we can be healed in our bodies because in verse 8 it says, Then your light shall break forth like the morning and your healing shall spring forth speedily. When we fast the right way and we give our bread to the hungry, we take care of those who are cast down, and we let the oppressed go free, and that we break every yoke when we do that, when we meet those conditions, the fast that God likes, not the fast that people are doing in the past where they're just fighting and just trying to brag how good they are, no, but doing it God's way, then God says, when you do that, when I see your heart, then your body will be healed. And so right now, if you need healing in your bodies, yes, there's the promise of God of divine healing that by his stripes you are healed. At the same time, you gotta understand it's also a biblical principle if you want healing in your body fast and pray and seek the Lord your body will take care of itself and God will also divinely heal you because that is the second benefit of fasting and prayer if you do so so if you need healing in your body today maybe it's time for you to fast and seek the Lord the third benefit of fasting is that God will promote you. You don't have to promote yourself. God will promote you because this is a biblical principle. Jesus says this in Matthew chapter 23, verse 12. Whoever exalts himself will be humbled and whoever humbles himself will be exalted. It is the promise of God that if you humble yourself with prayer and fasting, God will exalt you in due time. Now, how do we know that prayer and fasting is actually humbling yourself? Well, because we find that in 1 Kings chapter 21, verse 27 to 29, it says that King Ahab tore his clothes, put sackcloth on himself, and fasted. And in verse 28, it says that the word of the Lord came to Elijah saying, See how Ahab has humbled himself before me. And what did Ahab do? He tore his clothes, he put on sackcloth, and he fasted. The biblical principle of humbling yourself is to fast and seek the face of God. If my people who are called by my name will humble themselves and seek my face, call on my name and turn from their wicked ways, then I will hear from heaven and heal their land. Because God desires that his children will come to him and rely on him, not to figure out things on their own mind, but that they'll humble themselves and say, God, I don't have the solution right now, but I know that you do. I don't have the power right now, but I know that you do because I can do all things through you. Not through my own power, but through you. When we humble ourselves in that fashion and we say, 
God, only your hand can change the situation, then that is when God steps in and says, you know what, I'll do the impossible for you because when you believe in me, when you call upon my name and you turn to seek me, that's when I give you the miracle. That's when I deliver you because you're not relying on your own strength, but you're relying on me. To the human mind, this seems almost contrary because how can you humble yourself when nobody's seeing because Jesus says, when you fast, don't let anyone know. The hypocrites do that. The Pharisees, oh, they just figure their faces. Oh, I'm fasting. Oh, look how how spiritual I am. You know what? Jesus says they got the reward because they go on the streets, they pray in the street corner, they fast, they disfigure the faces. And Jesus says, don't do that. Because if you do that, you won't have reward from your Father in heaven. Rather, when you fast, anoint your face, wash your face, anoint it so that you do not appear to other people that you're fasting. And so when you do it in that fashion, God will reward you publicly, openly, just like when you pray in secret. That is the key to promotion in the kingdom of God to humble yourself, go low, and to seek the face of God and in due time he will promote you because how many times have you tried to promote yourself whether it's in your work whether it's in ministry whether it's in whatever situation you're in and you just feel like i just hit the ceiling i can't promote myself well maybe it's time to think that hey it's not my job to promote myself anymore it's just my job to honor the king of kings and to do and be faithful to whatever i have right now and so that when i keep on being faithful and seeking god and humbling myself i know it's a principle that in due time god will exalt me. Maybe that is the attitude that you and I have to keep in mind and to have all the time. The fourth benefit of fasting is that you can overcome sin. If there's certain habitual sins that you have been dealing with, I highly encourage you to go to prayer and fasting to seek God to help you to be delivered from that. Because let me tell you something, when you are not eating, when you're feeling that sensation, that hunger, your flesh is telling you, man, you're gonna go eat. You're gonna die if you don't eat. And that's a lie. You're not gonna die. You're not fasting 40 days like Jesus. Some people do that. But I guarantee you most people and so far i've not fasted 40 days but maybe one day god will call me to do that i don't know but if you're not fasting 40 days you're not going to die unless you have some kind of medical condition then of course when you fast consult your doctor do something that's wise right use your brain that god's given you but at the same time when your flesh is crying out that it needs to eat many times it doesn't need to eat it's just being used to wanting to eat so you're gonna deny the flesh the same way you want to go into that sin the same way that you want to watch things that you shouldn't watch online the same thing when you want to drink something you shouldn't drink same thing when you want to eat more than you should the same thing we want to cheat on certain things that you shouldn't cheat on all those things are the flesh crying out hey do it do it it's pleasurable it's joyful when you do it but what they don't tell you is that afterwards you're gonna feel bad about it you can feel conviction and you're gonna feel like why did i do it again and so when you fast you deny the flesh you're training your flesh to say no i'm not gonna eat when i feel like want to eat and so next time when you feel the same temptation coming up you're like hey i've denied my flesh by fasting so now of course i can also deny the temptation to sin because i actually love God and I want to honor him and I can tell you when you're fasting it's very hard to engage in the things of the world it's very hard to watch ungodly movies listen to things that are unholy or people cussing and things like that because during the time of prayer and fasting you're gonna to want to seek God you want to read his word and sometimes you're gonna feel very weak you don't have much energy especially in the first few days but then that's when you press in and say God even if I'm just sitting here I'm just meditating on your word I know that I'm gonna be still and know that you are God and when you do that God gives you power from on high to break every yoke to break every chain as you seek him because that is the promise of God when you fast the way that God wants you to do he will help you overcome the things that you can't do in your natural means by yourself and lastly the fifth benefit of prayer and fasting is that you can get breakthrough in your life how many of you need breakthrough right now in Matthew chapter 17 verse 20 to 21 a very famous story a father brought his son to the disciples so that he cast out a demon from the son because he had epilepsy he'd be thrown into the fire and yet the disciples couldn't cast out that demon Jesus looks at the situation and says you perverse and wicked generation how long shall i be with you and then jesus rebuked the demon cast it out and healed the boy and he was made free the disciples later came with jesus and say how come we can't cast out that demon and jesus says it is because of your unbelief and this kind does not come out except by prayer and fasting in your life and my life there's certain things that cannot be accomplished unless we seek the absolute power and the supernatural power of god through prayer and fasting this is a biblical principle so next time you feel like there's certain things you can't do whether it's casting out of a demon from a family or friend that you've been trying to do for a long time whether it's a certain situation in your workplace that you're trying to break through but a certain family member is trying to pray them back into the kingdom you have to understand that there's supernatural power in prayer and fasting certain things that you can't do in the natural but through prayer and fasting 
you can get that breakthrough because Jesus has shown that to us in Matthew chapter 17, verse 20 to 21. Remember, don't just like have this diet of not eating. You have to seek God. You have to read the word, pray, pray in tongues, listen to sermons about fasting, seek the Lord in this new year for direction, for his guidance, for his providence. Because think about this. What if it's going to take you one year to do on your own? God does it in one month or one week. This is why you want to seek God because you want to step into the calling. You want to step into the destiny that God has called you. Especially when you look around the world today, the spirit of the Antichrist is here and Jesus can come anytime now. Nobody knows exactly when. It could be a day later, a year later, 10 years later, 50 years later. Nobody knows. But the fact of the matter is when we look around the world today, the signs are all here. We want to be ready for the coming of Jesus. And so I encourage you to fast and to seek God, not just in the beginning of the year, and make fasting a consistent lifestyle that you can implement in your life. As as we continue to wait for the coming of the Lord Jesus, may we make fasting our lifestyle, that we seek God, that we're not depending on our own power, that every week, every month, every year, we're seeking God, we're praying, we're fasting, we're seeking God, because we know that we can't accomplish this mission on our own. Sometimes I pray to God, even if I can do this on my own, I don't want to do this on my own, because on the day when I see you, I wanted to be that I can say, God, I relied on you, not by my own power, not by my own might, but by your spirit. If you're wondering whether we're really living in the end times and whether there are signs around us, you need to watch this video right here where I talk about the six signs of the mark of the beast. When you see this, you'll know that the Antichrist is being ushered into the world stage and you need to be ready because Jesus is coming. Go watch this video right here and click like in this video. Share people who need to hear it. And if you need a prayer of healing, if you need deliverance in your body to be free from demons, post in the comments below. Until next time, God bless you.